Hello, my name is Fiona Walsh from Empowered Presentations and I'd like to welcome you to today's admin chat. Today we're going to have a look at what I call slide theory and the title of today's talk is the three pillars of PowerPoint. So really these are things to think about before you open up PowerPoint and jump into creating slides. So let's take a look at the first pillar which is people. So when we're talking about people, what we're talking about is our audience. So who is it that we're presenting to? We could be presenting to school children. I know quite often people from industry would be going into their local schools to talk about the industry they're in and try and encourage people to get an interest in going into that particular area or a career. Um, I know there's global programs like Junior Achievement where staff can go in and teach underprivileged schools certain topics that might be relevant to their industry. And then we've got lectures in university. So then we're talking to young adults. We could be presenting to our peers. Perhaps it's a staff update type environment. We could be at a conference or a workshop. Maybe it's to other peers or potential customers even. Maybe we're delivering a keynote to 2,000 people. Or perhaps our executive is delivering a keynote to 2,000 people. Or maybe you're presenting to the executive committee or project stakeholders. So the way we would create our slides will be different for each of these scenarios. So for example, children, we're going to want to make our slides more fun. We're going to want to have more colourful slides and images. We might want it to make it quite interactive. We're possibly going to get quite lots of interruptions and lots of questions throughout the presentation, not just at the end. For university students, we probably want to make that interactive as well to keep their attention span. They've been sitting in lectures all day. We might want to introduce online polls into our slide deck, maybe that they can answer from their phones. If we're presenting to our peers, we probably want our slides to look professional and polished. We might want it to be more informal, depending on the topic, and we, we might want questions to be left to the end or, or have questions throughout the presentation. If we're speaking at a conference, generally speaking, there's less interaction. Unless you're using some of the online interaction tools like Poll Everywhere, for example, uh, to get some audience engagement. If we're delivering a keynote, we generally would have less interaction unless you've got a roaming mic, which sometimes you would have, and at conferences too. If we're presenting to the executive committee, we probably want that to look a little bit more professional and polished. Maybe it's going to be a bit more formal as well, depending on the organisation, of course. So think about the imagery that you'd use for these different scenarios. Our slides would be very different depending on who it was we're presenting to. So the next pillar is purpose. So why are we presenting? There's always a reason as to why we're presenting. It could be to inform. So if we think about it from a corporate environment, we might be trying to inform people of, say, a new performance management system that we're a process that we're launching. If you're a smaller organization, maybe you're trying to tell people what it's like to work with you. And the next reason why the purpose for us to presenting for us to present is inspire. Perhaps we're looking to inspire, inspire someone. Maybe we want people to volunteer to come onto our organising committee. Um, maybe we want to try and get somebody to achieve a goal. We're trying to inspire them to, to take action, to do something, take up a new hobby, um, join the uh, sports and social committee. And then we have influence. So this is where we're trying to get someone to change their behaviour, a belief or opinion. So we want to influence them to change the way they think. So we're trying to maybe sell an idea to the management team 
or maybe we want to influence our customers to, to buy from you. So if you think that we have a purpose, then there should always be a call to action. So quite often I see people ending with thank you, thank you slide or questions. I think that's quite a weak ending to, to finish on. So we always need to have a call to action. It doesn't need to be forceful. You know, it might, we might not all be in sales. So it could be something subtle like uh, connect with me on LinkedIn because that's where you'll find more information. Or maybe it's going to be the next step is for you to provide funding for this project. So the next step is for you to sign off on the funding so we can get kicking, get, get, the, get the project kicked off. So there's always a call to action and do put it in there because it's really, really powerful to actually have that call to action at the end of your slides rather than just finishing with a thank you. You're not actually asking anyone to take action. So think about how you can maybe incorporate a call to action at the end of your presentation. So let's have a look at the purpose then. So if we're trying to inform somebody, we're giving them information and that might mean we've got more text heavy slides. And perhaps we're going to have two slide decks or we're going to send the text heavy slide slides after our presentation, maybe as a PDF that people can then read and digest at their leisure. OK, if we're trying to inspire people, we probably want to have motivating images and we want to be telling the stories of success to inspire people to take that action. If we're trying to influence, we're trying to sell an idea or a concept. So maybe we want more stats on that. So maybe we want more information, like 85% of people after doing X then did Y. You know, we want to give that information. And if we're using data, we need to make sure that the data sources are somewhere in case we're asked. So if a member of the executive committee then turns around and says, oh, can you, you know, what's your reference for that? You can put that in your slideshow notes and then you can give that information straight away. OK. Um, perhaps there's external links to the data in the PDF files as well for that scenario. So moving on to the place. So this is where we are presenting. So perhaps it's an online environment. Maybe it's a hybrid setup where we've got people in the room with us and we've got people online. Maybe it's in person in the office environment. So it's an environment we know and that we're comfortable with. Perhaps it's a one to one and it's in somebody's office or perhaps your own office. You're just presenting a concept to your manager or to one of your team and you're having a one to one and you're just showing it on your monitor on your desk. We could be in an offsite meeting room where perhaps we're not sure of the technology that we've got in that room. It could be a conference type environment where we've got a large audience. So let's have a think about this large audience here. Let's take this person down here. What information do you think they can see on the screen when they're sat right at the very back? Makes you think, doesn't it? So the place is really important. If we were working, if we were presenting in an online environment, we might need to engage a bit more. We might want more polls. We might want to use the chat function, you know, have more questions to get that engagement going. People could be viewing in front of their desks, but they could also be viewing on their mobile phones. So that's something to take into consideration as well in relation to what content you have on your slide. If you've got lots of information on your slide, and you're going to have people viewing from a mobile phone, are they going to be able to see the information that you have up there? That's really a th one to think about. If it's a hybrid environment, we need to ensure that we're talking and looking at both groups and the setup might be different. You know, maybe we've got a view of somebody in there down the bottom corner of the screen and then our eye contact is, is there. We're not actually looking then at, the, at our audience. So that's something that's really, really important. We have to make sure we're looking at our camera you know, rather than talking to the people in the room here and forgetting these people. So perhaps you need a prompt to make sure that you're including everybody in the environment. And also thinking about our slides, because again, we've got people in the room here that can, we know can see, but can everybody see in the hybrid environment? 
So that's something to consider as well. If it's an in-person, where is it? And what facilities have we got? If it's that one-to-one -one office environment, it's more probably the collaboration. Um, so maybe that's, that's one that we don't need to consider too much as to how we create our slides. The large audience. If it's in a large audience, what about the people at the back? What can they see on the slides? If you're doing a keynote type presentation, you might only have one image on a slide and no text, or maybe only a couple of words, three words maybe max, because people at the back won't be able to read those words. I sat through a presentation only uh, yesterday in a hotel and loads and loads and loads of information on slides. I couldn't read any of it. And in fact, the presenter couldn't read it either. It was so small. So not really great. That's the type of environment where we'd have two slide decks. We'd have one that goes as a PDF afterwards. That's our handout. And we have the second one where we strip out all that information and we just have the real top level few key words to describe what it is we're talking about. Remember, PowerPoint is an aid to us speaking. It's not a crutch. We shouldn't be reading off slides and we certainly shouldn't be turning around to look at the screen behind us. Nobody wants to see the back of our heads. They want to see our face when we're presenting. Okay. If it's an on, uh, if it's an offsite um, environment or if it's an environment that's not in your office area, it's somewhere else, be that a meeting room or a conference, we need to know what facilities we've got. Is it widescreen or overhead projector? Why is this important? Well, the slide size for a widescreen is different to an overhead projector. One is more square, one is more rectangle. If you're using the wrong slide size on the wrong monitor or, or, or overhead projector, you're going to lose some of the space on the slide. You're going to have black bars either down the bottom or along the top. So we don't want to have, we don't want to waste the slide size that we've got. We want to maximise that and have as, as much of that for people to view as possible. And another thing as well to consider when we're talking about images, I've just said there that, uh, you know, we can only have, we, we can get away in a large audience environment of having just one image on the slide and maybe no text. At the end of the day, we're talking, so they're going to be listening to us talking. And if we think about the old adage, 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 a picture tells a thousand words. Well, it does, doesn't it? If you pick the right image, you might not need any words on the screen at all because you've got that concept is coming across from the image. So then when we're talking about images, make sure you've got good quality images in your presentation. But sometimes when you're looking at a slide on the screen in front of you, at your desk, it looks fine on that size, but imagine it in a large environment when it's on a really, really big screen. Is it going to look as good then? If the image is slightly pixelated, you probably want to find a better quality image. Okay. Now, for those of you that are Microsoft 365 subscribers, we have a fantastic image bank within um, that platform. So if you go to insert, the insert tab in PowerPoint, and there's stock images, if you click on that, you've then got uh, about 10,000 high quality images that you can use in your PowerPoint presentations. There's some really, really good ones. Um, the search function could be a little bit better. So play around with the words you put into the search box to find the images, but they're really good, high quality ones. OK, so that's a that's a good tip for you there if you're a 365 subscriber. So now we're going to move on to something a little bit different. And these are the top three questions I get asked during my training. The question number one, I'm speaking for 10 minutes. How many slides should I have? So bearing in mind what I've just talked about, when we're considering these three pillars, OK? If we're presenting a keynote speech and we're using imagery, OK, we don't have many words on our slide. We might not have any words, not, not, not many, but we might have none at all. And we also said that a picture tells a thousand words. So you could have a picture on a slide 
And four seconds later, you could go to the next slide and have another picture that's representing what you're talking about. You could even have a slideshow of images. Perhaps in the staff updates, you've got images from a recent you know, employee engagement day or something like that. And you might have a slideshow of images running automatically through your, your presentation. We can even put music across those slides and the music will fade out when it gets to the end slide, ready to go onto your next one in that staff update type environment. So really, really uh, powerful. So the answer to this question is, you can have as many slides as you want to have. <laughs> it really doesn't matter, providing they are fit for purpose, providing we've thought about the people, the purpose and the place. You can have as many slides as you want. I sat through a presentation a number of months ago and it was delivered um, by a PR agency and it was in a hotel environment again. So I was sat uh, in the middle of the room and they had fantastic imagery that had been taken by professional photographers. OK, so really high quality images and they had one slide with 12 images on. So you could imagine little tiny boxes like this across the screen. And they then started telling the audience how wonderful these uh, images were and they were describing the images and nobody could see them because there were 12 on one slide. And what I would have done in that scenario is had one big image per slide and everybody would have been able to see it. It wouldn't have taken up more time. The same amount of time would have been taken up by going through the 12 images that the person was describing as it would have one on each slide. OK, so just to reiterate that, if you're speaking for X amount of minutes, you can have as many slides as you want. Now, next question. What's the optimum amount of text on a slide? So this, the answer to this question really depends on the, the three pillars again, really. It's the, 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 the people we're presenting to, the purpose and the place. If we're presenting to a large audience, it might be one word, it might be two words. If we're sending a PDF around to someone to read at their leisure, we could have loads of information on that slide. If we're presenting it to people and we're, you know, sitting around a boardroom type environment, then probably see reasonably well. But we don't want our text to be too small, otherwise they won't be able to read it. And then the downside of having people reading the text, if you're presenting, is that they're not listening to you because they're reading the text on the slide. And when we're presenting, we want our audience to be engaged and focused on us because we're delivering the information. OK, what we don't want is people reading ahead because they've switched off. They're not listening. I think that's been scientifically proven that when there's text on the slide in paragraph type, a bit like this here, this is a, a, a larger sentence. So, you know, people are probably going to be reading that sentence rather than focusing on, on, on what you're saying. So if you've got several paragraphs of text you've probably lost your audience because when they're reading, they're not listening to you at the same time. OK, so have a think about that. But as I say, it depends on the purpose. If you're sending something around afterwards, that's absolutely fine. And another way to do that, if you have got lots of paragraph on lots of paragraphs of text on your slide, try and focus that down just a couple of points and then pop all that information into the notes section. And then when you use the presenter view, you can see all that text in the notes. So, you know, it prompts you as to what you want to say, but you've only got the limited information on the slide. So that's the way I would approach that one. So the next question, how can I make my slides look better? That's uh, definitely a good question. So let's have a look at my top three tips for better slides. So we'll start with images. We're going to have a look at the slide size. That's what I was talking about earlier. And then we'll have some alternatives to bullets. So quite often, what I would see is a slide something like this, and it's probably going to have some corporate branding on it. You know, I understand that this is just a plain slide. So what's the important things when we're working with images? Well, we want high quality images, what I've just mentioned there. So if you're using any of your um, corporate images, they're going to be high quality. So we're OK there. If we're taking images from other sources, just be careful that they are good quality. If you're ever taking screenshots to put into a presentation, perhaps it's a system that you're using and you want to include a screenshot in, in the slide. A tip for you, 
is to make um, make the program that you're taking the screenshot from as large as you can on the screen. So, for example, if it's um, from a website, use your web browser, get your web browser and maximize up the percentage of the view so it's as big on your screen as possible and then take a screenshot that way. OK, put that into your presentation because it will be of higher quality than a small screenshot and you're making it big. OK, also, if you're working on a laptop, don't take the screenshot on the laptop, take the screenshot from your monitor. Again, it'll be a larger file, but then it'll be better quality when you're actually presenting it. OK. Rather than a slide like this, what I like to do is have uh, the slide, the, the picture full size, because I think that just really gets the, the, the point across. OK, so if you're able to do that, you can quite easily make the image fit. So what I've done here is I have put in a shape. OK, so a rectangular shape here, and I've used a gradient fill to change the gradient across the slide so that it goes from being transparent, so it's transparent here, to being solid white here. And that allows me then to put the text over the image. The image actually ends here, and you can't really see that on the slide because I have this, this uh, rectangle over it, and then my, my text is over the top of that. So that's my tip for um, having your text over images. OK, so high quality, full screen if you can. OK, and that's one of the ways you can put text over images is to just put a, a shape and change the gradient of the shape using transparency to allow nice subtle, um, a, a subtle gradient there to uh, rather than just having a solid box. OK, that just makes it look a bit easier on the eye. So next we have slide size. So as I talked about earlier, this is an example of where we're using a standard slide on a widescreen monitor. So what we will have is these two black bars down the side. And that's basically it, it's space that we could be utilizing. So that's probably about a third of this slide size here that we're wasting. OK. And we're on a bright widescreen monitor now, so this isn't exactly how it would look, but I've recreated this to give you an example of what it looks like when we have a widescreen slide on an overhead projector. OK, we then have two black bars across the top. OK, so again, we're missing out on some of the, the, the content or some of the, 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 the content on the slide. Um, and it just it just doesn't look as good. OK. OK, so that's the three three pillars of PowerPoint and our three questions. So that's what it's going to look like when it's on a slide. So we want it to look uh, full screen like we have here. OK, so we have the three questions and that the third question or the third question I get asked is how can I make my slide look better? Um, well, th the third point was around bullets. So this is a typical slide that we have here with bullets on it here. And we've just got lots of text written down. OK. So uh, when we read, we read from left to right across the screen and bullets typically go down a screen. So it doesn't lend itself to the way we want to consume information. So rather than something like this, which is kind of written more in sentence style, perhaps we could consider something like this slide where we have our points going across. So we've got one, two, three, four. OK, this is quite easy to do. It's created with a couple of text boxes and putting in the uh, numbers there. And a quick way to do that is to, to group the text box and the number. And once we've got the, the, the content nice, nicely aligned and we're, we're happy with the size of the text, we can duplicate that, that grouped item by pressing Control and D. And then we just change the text in it. And then we've got all that alignment and font size and everything the same. OK, so that's the way we can quickly do that. And another example is pretty much the same as this one, but it's using icons instead. So we've got the same text there, but we've got different icons. So we've got one there to represent the documentation, 
penetration testing, license management, and the pricing structure. Okay, so these icons are all available for our 365 subscription. On the insert tab, we've got icons. We can pop those icons in and we can edit them. So we can change the color, okay? Um, they're also available for people using 2019, uh, the version of 2019 of Office and 21, 2021. So if you don't have the subscription, you have access to these icons. And the beauty of creating something like this and then duplicating it, what we can do is we can change the icon and it will automatically come in as the same size. OK, so we're not inserting an icon every time. We're right clicking on the icon. Then we're going to change icon, choose a new one, and then all we're doing is changing the color. Okay, so a really, really easy way to create a slide like this. So that's the end of the presentation. So I would like to end with a call to action because that's what I've been talking about in my presentation. So if you would like to see some more tips and tricks from me, I invite you to look me up on LinkedIn. The QR code there is linking to my LinkedIn profile. And do please send me a connection message, a message when you connect saying that you've watched the video here today. And I would love to connect with you and you can see some more tips and tricks of mine on LinkedIn. So thank you very much today for listening to this admin chat. And I look forward to connecting with you on LinkedIn. Thank you very much.